Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm blending two exposures together. If you weren't aware of the most recent update to Luminar Neo, which includes the portrait background replacement, I've got a video about that there. The One of the other things they included in that update is support for raw files as additional layers. You couldn't do that in the past. So in the past when I did an exposure blend, I had to take like a JPEG or something and use that for part of the photo, but no longer, which means you are now operating with raw, that rich data from your raw files in a blended exposure, even on multiple layers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, this is a photo I took in London, tripod mounted. As you can see, um, there's, a, there's a boat or boats passing on the river down below, kind of down in this section. You can see I basically got a, a long exposure of the boats. And in doing so, I also got a long exposure of the sky, right? So that means this area here, St. Paul's, this is a Millennium Bridge. It's just kind of blown out. Uh, it is a raw file, as you can see there, because I have develop raw available. A couple things before I go blend this exposure and talk about it. The first thing is, um, if you're going to be doing this, I recommend shooting on a tripod so that your photos line up perfectly. The reason why is, although you can resize and reposition and move things in um, Luminar Neo when you add a new layer, there is no like auto alignment of multiple images like in Aurora HDR, for example, where it's really designed for you to be blending multiple images. This uh, layers implementation is not really necessarily for exposure blends, but it does work. So I've got this raw file. I'm going to add a new layer and I've got this one right here, which is just a darker and therefore a uh, shorter exposure version of the same scene. You can see it's kind of now sitting on top and is blending at 50% opacity, which actually looks really good. Now, if I go to 100, I'll have only this top layer. And at, of course, at zero, uh, zero, I would only have the bottom layer. So it defaults to 50. And what I want to do here, as you can imagine, is use the top part of the photo because I like the bottom that I had. But what I think I'm going to do is do like a maybe about a 70. And I'm going to take a linear gradient just to stick that on top. So I'm going to pull that linear gradient down here and I'm going to line it up about to where it's a level with the top of that section of the bridge there, maybe about like that. So I think that looks good. The pink area, as you know, is the mass. That is the top photo, the darker photo, if you will. And now I'm going to back out of that and you can see I've got a darker sky and slightly darker along the buildings and on the like the top of the dome and all that in St. Paul's. So if you look at the before and after, there's the before just turning off this layer basically, and there's the after. So I've already got a much better looking exposure. And this one on top, remember if you're looking on the layers panel, see the one that has the blue square around it, that's the active layer. I'm on the top layer and as you can see here, it says develop raw. It is a raw file. So now that I've blended the two, I can go into properties and I can take a look at this opacity, like at 100 opacity, again, just masked into the sky. It's too dark. It just looks weird. And I think the default, or not I think, the default is 50. It's just not really dark enough. So I went to something like 70, but you can, as you can see here, move it around and kind of adjust accordingly. I think I'll go with like 65 or let me try 70 again. 70 seems a little bit dark, so that's something to think about is how are you going to blend the top piece with the bottom piece in this case. It could be the left side and the right side. It could be the bottom with the top. You can blend them however you like. My point is think about it. Look at the light. I think at 65, I think it goes together. I think that looks like I did a pretty good job exposing the photo and got a pretty decent single exposure, even though you're looking at a blended version. Now, what I would normally do with like in Luminar 4, for example, where they had stamped layers, is I'd create a stamped layer, which basically sticks the two together, and I would go edit them because there are some things I want to do to this photo. But in Luminar Neo, I don't have the ability for stamped layers. But what I do have is really rich data on each of these layers because they're both raw files. So what I think I will do first uh, before editing the overall photo is go in and edit each individual piece with this develop raw tool. So I'm gonna go in here and basically pull highlights down. Now keep in mind, I'm just pulling it down on the top half of the photo, which is that top layer that was blended about halfway through. So I basically just took the highlights negative 100 
and I might add a little bit of contrast as well. And maybe I'll take a look at the whites if I need to pull that down a little bit or pull it up. I think I'll pull that down slightly. And so I'm just kind of fussing around with the top part of the photo in Develop Raw because again, it's a raw file. And while I'm only using the top half of the raw file, it's still richer data. So it gives me a little bit better control. So I've done what I wanted to do there. If you look at before and after, that's what the top piece of the photo looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. Let's say I'm finished with that, but hey, I've got raw file data on this bottom one as well. So remember, check your left-hand side to see which one has the blue square around it. I'm on the bottom layer and I'm gonna click on develop raw. Now keep in mind what you see on your screen is the blended photo, but what I'm working on is that bottom half. So I'm gonna also add some contrast here also pull down the highlights a little bit and maybe lift the shadows a bit. So maybe something about like that. Let me look at the before. Again, just the bottom half of the photo, basically the bridge and down. So there it is before and there it is now. That's all I'm impacting because I'm on the bottom layer and that is the bottom half of the photo. I hope all that's clear. I don't think there's anything else I wanna do uh, specific to having access to that raw data. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. So now I've got a blended photo. There it is before, there it is after, and on each layer I used Develop Raw to adjust specific things in the top part and separately in the bottom part. Now I'm gonna click back up here, make sure I'm on that top layer. I'm gonna go ahead and export the photo because what I wanna do, and this is where having a stamped layer would be super helpful because I could stamp it together and then go edit that stamped layer, but I can't do that. So the workaround for me is to export to disk and I'm gonna go ahead and export it as a TIFF and I'll just click save, drop that onto my desktop and then pull it back in because the TIFF is still a good quality file, a lot better than a JPEG. And I'll go in and finalize my edits on that combined image. Okay, so I'm doing these in single image edits. If you look here, this one and the one in the center look identical, and that's because they are. This one in the center, you can see, has been edited. That is my original raw file combined, right, with the other raw file. So if I click on that, you can see it says raw down here in the bottom left corner. If I click on the one on the left, that's the one I exported and added back to this folder. You can see it says TIFF. That's the one I'm gonna go edit because that is the combined overall photo. So I think the first thing I wanna do here is adjust the color temperature. So I'm gonna go into develop and just pull the temperature to the left because I gotta be honest, that orangey kind of yellow look is not really my thing. So I did that, maybe add a tad of vibrance. I'm gonna pop into structure AI, just give it a little bit of bump there, maybe something about like that. I'm also gonna go into color harmony and I'm gonna go into the midtones and I'm gonna go a little bit to the cyan which should impact the sky. Yeah, and a little bit towards the blue, which should impact the sky as well. Now it's impacting other areas, but I think overall that looks good. But I was using that to pull back some of that still kind of orangey yellow color in the, in the sky. So if, if you look at the before, still fairly orangey yellow overall, and the after much better. And I can try the highlights as well. Let me just go to blue and see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing with the cyan and try that. Now, just be careful, you might be getting too much blue or I might be getting too much blue for your taste. And truthfully, you're gonna be editing your own photos. So kind of just depends on what your tastes are. I kind of like that. It's maybe a little bit too blue. I might pull down the brilliance a little bit so it's not just like totally over the top. Uh, and then I'm gonna go check out Super Contrast just to see if there's anything I wanna do here because it does give me great control over the light. I'm gonna check out the highlights. I'm gonna pull that to the right. I kinda of like that a little bit. And I'm gonna pull the midtone slightly to the left and the shadows probably, yeah, a little bit to the right. Uh, just a pop of super contrast, just to help me refine the light overall. So there it is before and there it is now. And that's my edit. Now this was less about the edit and more about the process. So I hope it gives you some ideas about taking a raw file, sticking another raw file on top of it blending them together with some of the masking tools. In this case, it was a linear gradient, and then separately doing some basic raw develop edits on the two different raw files, 
exporting as a TIFF, pulling it back in, and then making further refinements to it. But it's giving me the ability to really get the photo that I want, better control over the light on the top of the image, including the sky and the buildings, and then better overall control of the final image by exporting as a TIFF, adding back to Luminar, and customizing. So for this uh, version of the photo, meaning this is my TIFF, I went from that, which was incredibly orange, that's essentially just the two raw files blended together and exported as a TIFF. And now with a bit of color control, super contrast, temperature, things like that, I got a much different looking image, one more in line with my liking. But the point was, you're able to get raw files as image layers. You can blend them together to create a blended exposure and then customize as you see fit. Part of the fun and the power of Luminar Neo. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Thanks for stopping by. I'll be back soon with a new video. You guys take care of yourselves. And until then, my friends, adios.